Hey there guys, it's Tony here again. Um, this time we're looking at Ripple control receivers. Um, going from the 50s right up to now. Um, starting off with Rhythmatic control, um, which is the early version. It came out in the 50s and um, sort of they stopped producing these probably in the later 70s. And they went to these ones, so the um, Zellweger. RE1, which is a um, decabit signal. So inside the 1950s version of the, um, which is a, the rhythmic signal, uh, the receiver is, um, you got two pendulums, then you got a con set of contacts on each pendulum, which is located here. And when these things close, they um, operate these coils, which will then pull the switch to the open or closed position contacts right there, so then they open and close, you can see them opening and closing them, yep. So what we're going to do is we're going to, um, I'm going to power this up and then operate, operate it because they no longer put out the signal so I'm going to um, operate this one manually or using this homemade battery which I actually built for my Magneto telephone line which I'll actually put up on the video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this up to the signal wire for the, uh, hopefully it don't blow up in my face, nope it didn't, cool, let's start. Now, I'll put power on to this unit. So what I've done is I've got this connected up to this um, light over here. Now when this, if this was operating street lights, it would have been back in the days when street lights look cool, which is when they would have been like this here, which is a radio wave street light, which is from the same era. So, um, it's all powered up, ready to go. So what I'm going to do is, you got two of these, oh, I'm going to activate it, but um, you got two of these pendulums. This one here is for activating this solenoid here which will then pull this down and allow these contacts to drop closed. You've got this one here, which is, um, which will activate this one, which is, will have it in the position it is now, which is in the off position. Get that out of the way. Um, so how it worked was they had the signal, which would be like a DC based signal, which will turn off and on. So it'll be on There we go, there we go, so it's activated. So you can see here when I do it quickly, the resonant frequency of the pulse going on and off will match the, match the pendulum. You can see the contacts here, opening and shutting. Okay, now if I do this slower, in a slower frequency, I'll operate only this bottom one. So we're operating now. There we go, and now she's uh, up, uh, now she's opened the contacts, and now it's off. So I'm going to have a um, let you guys have a look and see how the switching, the load switching, actually works. So I'm going to go quickly, and the contacts are now closed. Okay, then I'm going to go slower frequency. it's off. So you can see these two pendulums which actually, actually swing at two different speeds. One swinging quickly and the other one swinging slowly. Now that's to do with um, resonant frequency. Now resonant frequency is also is also the reason why you see in earthquakes some buildings will still be standing while the others around them are all demolished. Now that's a result in the height of the building in relation with the speed of the shaking of the ground in an earthquake. So the ground shakes slowly, the building's gonna, you know, it's just gonna absorb its own sway. But if it shakes quickly, you can see how the screwdriver is now, now slow down. So I'm just holding this thing just um, lightly in my hand. So that's pretty much how re resonant frequency sort of works. It's the same as with this, with the supply. So I go quickly, 
it'll only make the other one make the on one actually operate and then if I go slowly the um, the the one that's actually not being operated will actually cancel out its own signal so if I go quickly sorry, if I go quickly so I'm still doing it you can see this one here is actually cancelling out that signal and that's how that works so um now when these things were phased out well they we're in operation for years afterwards, however they're no longer in operation now. They're still out there, but they're all being switched to the on position and then they're no longer sending out the rhythmatic signal. So when they um, started to phase these things out, they bought in the um, Zoega RE1, which came out in the 70s. Now it's based on Zellweger's, um, Zellweger is actually a, um, a Swiss, Switzerland, is from Switzerland. So, um, they, um, this here is more on an RF frequency, so you can see this one here, I'll try to zoom on, 317 hertz, 317 hertz at 1.1 volts. Now these ones here are also, so you've got your switch module over here, so when, now these ones here, you know, they, they, they're good, but they're quite boring because, you know, it just sits there and then suddenly the switch will just flick down. And if you're waiting to watch it, well, you've probably blinked and missed it anyway. But, you know, that's all what they look like. They've got no flashing lights. They don't make any noise apart from a click when the switch um, operates. But with these ones here, when it, you can hear actually an audible hum. And it was quite neat to actually see these things in operation because that's what you'd hear for a little while. For about 30 seconds, you'd hear it, uh, that same, that dink, dink, hum. But, yeah, so once... Once these, um, this one here operates on a decabit um, signal, and um, then you, um, once they done away with these or stop producing them, they went to the RM3, which is a, the same sort of thing. But this one here, you can actually put more than one switch module in. So I've already got the screws undone, make it quicker. Here, there you've got some blanks, and then you've got the switch module here. Now this here, so that suddenly when this one here operates you'll just suddenly see the switch just pop up and when it turns off so that's the switch module now you can put three of these switch modules in here so you can operate more than one so you might um, they might be at a school or something where they're operating night store heaters as well um, as well as the hot water cylinder now these ones here, you can, they're programmed via this port here, so it's plugged into a computer and then programmed like that. You've also got a little flashing LED in here which tells you that the um, relay's actually got power on. These ones here were programmed by changing these cards. You can see this one here is, there's a hundred on channel two. And that's the card there. What I've done, you can see I've soldered um, links in here. Now I've actually changed it, it's no longer 100 on 2, it's actually now um, a different channel so then I can use this for operating street lights because that's what they use for turning the street lights on as well. So once this fellow was done away with or no longer produced they started making these ones which is a modern one, it's not really collectible it's just I've just got this just to show you guys what they use now. Yeah. However, the the other three now, they're going around, they're changing all the meters to now smart meters, but they're also changing the relays as well, that's why I've grabbed this. It's not really collectible, but I've been caught out in the past where you see something which is common as, and then the next thing you know it's gone, so I've, I've got this one in the collection now. So this one here is pretty much similar to the RM3, it's actually called a RO3, which is made by Eminet, which is actually the new name for Zellweger. This one here is programmed via this optical port here. So then you um, you put a, a like an optical plug on here, which is plugged into the computer, and it programs it. You can also put.